Mercury's Avatar Hybrid just destroyed three entire market segments overnight. And, honestly, the dealer panic is something boat buyers have never seen before. Pure electric startups lost their only advantage. Kicker motor sales collapsed 12% in 30 days. Mid-range four-strokes cannot compete on efficiency anymore. But there is a catch that Mercury is not telling you. But by the end of this video, you will know which engines just became obsolete, what hybrid ownership actually costs, and why small dealers are quietly closing, the silent takedown everyone missed. Mercury's Lake X facility in Florida ran continuous hybrid trials for 18 months. Engineers were not building another gas outboard, they were killing the electric versus gas debate entirely. The result is the first production outboard that switches power sources mid-cruise without requiring owner intervention. Battery depletes to 20%, gas generator kicks in automatically, no range anxiety, no planning, no manual switching. Return to Harbor System detects proximity and switches back to electric for silent docking. This is not vaporware, this is shipping to dealers quarter 2025. Three companies got blindsided and did not see it coming. Torquedo built an entire brand identity on Whisper Quiet electric operation. Mercury just stole that selling point while solving the range problem Torquedo could not crack. Yamaha's F25 has been the go-to trolling motor for base anglers for years. It now faces a hybrid that trolls just as quietly, but runs home at full speed without switching engines. E-Propulsion, the electric startup banking on early adopter premium buyers, just watch Mercury's 4000 dealer network swallow their entire target market. The difference between this launch and every other promised revolution is, honestly, infrastructure and trust. When Flux Marine promises a revolutionary product, you wait two years and just hope the company is still around when it ships. But when Mercury ships a product, it is on dealer floors in about 60 days and backed by Brunswick Corporation's manufacturing scale. That well, that's not just marketing. That is the difference between a prototype and a product you can actually buy and service. Internal Mercury projections suggest hybrid could represent 30% of sub-100 horsepower sales by 2027. That means roughly 25,000 hybrid outboards per year, replacing traditional gas engines. Each one costs dealers approximately $1,800 in lost service revenue over five years. Do the math across the entire market and you are looking at $45 million annually evaporating from dealer service bays. So, the question everyone should be asking is, how Mercury engineered something every other company failed to deliver? How did Mercury break the hybrid code? See, every other marine hybrid failed because designers treated boats just like cars. Car hybrids work because, well drivers use them every day and charge them up every night. But boat hybrids failed because recreational boaters use them only now and then. The battery just dies between trips. You show up to the dock all excited for a day on the water and realize you totally forgot to plug in last weekend. Mercury's engineers figured out the problem wasn't really the battery or the motor. It was actually asking owners to manage a system manually. The electric motor produces 7.5 horsepower continuously with peak bursts up to 20 horsepower. The gas generator is a single cylinder, 75 cubic centimeter engine that only charges the battery and provides electrical power. It never drives the propeller directly. That is the sweet spot for maximum efficiency. Over 8 hours of mixed use, the hybrid burns 2.8 gallons versus 4.5 gallons for a traditional 25 horsepower four-stroke. So, doing the same work, Mercury actually chose lithium iron phosphate instead of lithium ion. The trade-off here is, well, it's just a slightly heavier weight. But the payoff? That's longevity and safety. Lithium iron phosphate batteries last over 3,000 charge cycles compared to just 1,000 for lithium-ion. They also tolerate heat better, and they do not catch fire. Honestly, in real-world recreational use, the battery should outlast the outboard itself. Regenerative charging is, you know, the feature nobody really talks about, but owners notice it right away. When you're running on gas power, the system actually recaptures energy during deceleration. So, as you throttle down for a no-wake zone, the system converts your momentum into electrical charge while it slows the boat. Early owners are already reporting that they're getting 15 to 20% more electric range per day from regenerative charging alone. While Mercury was perfecting this technology, three entire market segments were about to disappear. If this changes how you think about outboards, hit subscribe so you don't miss what's next. The bodies in the wake. The kicker motor market just imploded. Bass boats and walleye fishing rigs have run dual motor setups for decades. Big gas engine for running between spots. Small kicker motor for silent trolling. Mercury's hybrid replaces both with a single unit. Yamaha's F, 
9.9 high thrust, Mercury's own 15 horsepower four-stroke, Honda's BF20, all suddenly redundant. Clean low-hour kicker motors dropped 12% in average selling price within 30 days of the Avatar announcement. Sellers are confused. Buyers know something fundamental changed. Pure electric startups are dying faster than anyone expected. Flux Marine raised $8 million, promising an electric future. Vision Marine bet the entire company on 180 horsepower electric outboards. Mercury just delivered every benefit of electric without the crippling weakness of range anxiety. So, two electric outboard startups are reportedly seeking buyers after the Mercury launch. Honestly, startups just can't compete with a 4,000 dealer service network and, you know, a century of brand trust. Mid-range four-stroke dominance basically ended the day Mercury started shipping hybrids, Suzuki DF70, Honda BF90, and those older Yamaha F75 models all built their reputations on reliability and fuel efficiency. Traditional outboards need like five oil changes over 500 hours. Meanwhile, hybrids just need two battery health checks and one software update. An oil change generates $85 in gross profit for the dealer. A battery health check generates $35. A shop performing 200 services annually loses $10,000 in gross profit for every hybrid sold in their market. When hybrids reach 20% market penetration, the average dealer loses $40,000 in annual service revenue. Traditional 25 horsepower four-stroke averages 1.8 gallons per hour across that mixed use pattern. That is 90 gallons per season at $5 per gallon, which is honestly conservative in many coastal markets you are spending $450 annually just on fuel. Mercury Avatar Hybrid running mostly on electric, with the gas range extender kicking in for longer runs, averages 0.7 gallons per hour, 35 gallons per season, $175 in fuel. You save $275 every single season. Over five years of ownership, $1,375 stays in your pocket instead of burning in the combustion chamber. Maintenance costs shift dramatically. Between the two platforms, traditional outboard maintenance includes an annual oil change at $120, spark plugs every 200 hours at $45, and fuel system cleaning at $80 to prevent ethanol damage and varnish buildup. Hybrid maintenance is battery health diagnostic at $60, software updates at zero cost because dealers perform them during routine service visits, and coolant check at $40 if the system uses liquid cooling. The battery replacement question is the elephant in the room that Mercury refuses to address directly. The company will not publish official battery replacement cost yet. Industry estimates based on similar marine lithium systems range from $2,800 to $3,500 for a complete pack replacement. Expected lifespan is 3,000 charge cycles, which translates to roughly 10 to 12 years of recreational use or 5 to 7 years of heavy commercial use. The gamble is straightforward. If the battery lasts 8 plus years, you win on total cost of ownership. If it catastrophically fails at year 6, you erase every dollar of fuel and maintenance savings with one massive repair bill. Mercury offers 3 years of battery warranty versus 2 years on traditional engines, which provides some protection but leaves a significant gap. So, the total cost of ownership reality check, well, it tells a different story than what you might see in the marketing materials. A hybrid outboard costs $18,500, compared to $11,500 for a comparable traditional 25-horsepower outboard. That's a $7,000 premium you pay up front before you even turn the key. The training crisis is, honestly, hitting dealer service departments right now, and most boat owners have no idea it's even happening. Getting certified as a gas engine mechanic costs about $1,200 per technician and requires a two-day course that covers carburetion, ignition systems, and four-stroke architecture. But high-voltage hybrid system certification? That costs $6,500 per technician. And, here's the kicker, it requires a full five-day course and triggers those mandatory higher insurance liability premiums for the dealership. So, a small independent dealer with three technicians on staff is looking at a $19,500 investment in training before they can legally service a single hybrid outboard. Insurance companies are not taking this lightly. Liability premiums are rising 15 to 20% across the board for any marine service facility that handles lithium battery systems above 48 volts. The insurance actuaries have done the math on thermal runaway fires and high voltage electrocution risk. Dealers are paying for that risk assessment, whether they want to or not, that is just the beginning of the cost cascade that keeps accelerating. Parts inventory is, honestly, a financial trap. 
dealers are sitting on about $75,000 in gas engine parts, while hybrids require pricey new components like battery modules, which can run anywhere from $800 to $1,200, and diagnostic tools that cost between $3,000 and $5,000. So, you can either stock these and tie up your capital, or skip them and risk losing sales. The whole service revenue model starts to fall apart. Hybrids need only half the visits and come with longer warranties, which really cuts into dealer profits. For example, a mid-sized dealer selling 15 hybrids could lose about $27,000 each year in service revenue. Consolidation is definitely on the horizon. Smaller dealers just can't handle the transition costs for training, new parts, and higher insurance. Somewhere around 10 to 15% might close or sell out within three years, which means less local service for everyone. The technology itself is still pretty unproven. There are software glitches, issues like saltwater corrosion, cold weather battery drain, and you know, parts availability can be a real problem. So, here's some advice for buyers. Gas engines are being discounted right now. If you're looking at hybrids, it's smart to wait for more real-world data, make sure you can actually charge at your marina, and really understand the traps. Marketed range is usually optimistic. Winter battery care adds extra cost and resale value is a bit of a gamble. Yamaha is probably going to respond soon too. Change is coming but it's a shift that'll take a decade, not something that happens overnight. The people who win are the ones who time the market. The losers are usually early adopters and smaller dealers.